Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. Uh, this video module will be concerned with uh, the efficiency of, of competitive markets. Uh, we noted in the uh, previous uh, module uh, that competitive markets clear. That is, we move to a graph like this and we observe that um, if the price were above uh, uh, P1, there would be a market surplus right there. And if the price were below that, there would be a shortage equal to that distance uh, right there. And as a consequence, the price would move to uh, P1, the quantity would move to uh, uh, Q1. And as a result, the quantity demanded equals the uh, quantity supplied, the market uh, clears. Economists like to say more about, about the, uh, the quality of competitive markets than just that they, uh, they clear. They go a step further and say that markets are efficient, that is, they maximize uh, uh, human welfare because they drive price to P1 and quantity Q1. Well, there are a number of ways of, of uh, considering uh, market efficiencies, but one of the better ones that I've come across uh, is one created by economist um, uh, Gary Becker at the University of, of Chicago. Becker notes in his analysis that the demand curve is the assumed inverse relationship between price and quantity, but this curve, while drawn as a thick line for purposes of visual presentation, is really a boundary. It is a boundary between what is unacceptable to consumers and what is acceptable uh, to consumers. That is, think about this curve as a razor uh, edge. Any point up to that razor's edge is acceptable to consumers. For example, consumers are willing to pay as much as P1 for quantity uh, Q1. Uh, that is, at the limit, they are willing to pay uh, for Q1 a price of as much as uh, P1. That, that means if they're willing to pay P1 for quantity Q1, they're willing, they should be willing to pay price P2 uh, uh, for that same quantity, simply because it's then a better deal. But if this the, is the limit price uh, that consumers are willing to pay for uh, Q1, then any point above this curve, say point A, or price uh, P4 is unacceptable to consumers. So again, the demand curve is really a boundary between what is acceptable and what is unacceptable uh, to uh, consumers. Uh, consumers are willing, unwilling to uh, accept this price quantity combination, they're willing to accept this one. Put it another way, uh, they're willing to accept uh, any quantity uh, underneath the demand curve, or they're willing to accept any combination in this area here. And the same goes for suppliers. There are, the supply curve is a boundary between what is uh, acceptable to suppliers and what is unacceptable. This is, these are the unacceptable combinations down through uh, here. These are the acceptable uh, combinations. Again, think of the supply curve as a razor, razor's edge. Uh, producers are willing to uh, accept at a minimum a price of P1 for quantity uh, uh, Q1. If they're willing to accept as little as P1 for this quantity, then they should be willing to accept a price of P2 for that same quantity. They're unwilling to accept uh, this price uh, simply because uh, it is below their boundary. It's also because uh, this price, P3, is below the marginal cost of producing that Q1 uh, unit. So the moral of the story is that producers are willing to accept any combination uh, in this striped area uh, here. They're unwilling to accept anything uh, down here. 